Mark. There exists many crimes, Kyle, in the human world. But one of the worst of them all is waste, Kyle. Here we exist on this little blue ball of ours, spinning through space at many thousands of kilometers per second. And we've only got so many resources, Kyle. We've only got so much oil, so much graphite, so much lead, so much you know, Chinese workers to dig it up out of the ground, etc. You know, child labor. For us, of course. Yep, eventually we'll run out. And this is the reason why I suggest that we bring Ahsoka to the War Crimes Tournament Tribunal at the Hog. Because think of all of the resource that was put into this show, Kyle. Think of how utterly wasted they are. What a complete and utter misuse of film and technology this damn thing is. It's quite impressive how they've managed to take millions of US dollars and just simply light them on fire. There is not- And just simply transform <laughs> it into shit. <laughs> yes. It's like, what? It's like, like I can see Dave Filoni's like, everyone gather around. Like, okay, watch me turn this pile of cash into literal shit. <laughs> Simsalabim become dung. And there you have the Ahsoka TV show, a pile of shit. <laughs> it's pretty much like the it's a primary party trick of Disney these days. It's transforming astronomic quantities of cash, like world hunger ending quantities of cash, according to the World Health Organization, and just pff, gone. So look at this. What are the, what do you look at the show? What what's in it? Not nothing good. <laughs> the worst part is, finally in this episode we get what everyone's been asking for, right? We we finally get it. Admiral Thrawn comes out, and he is even played by the the proper the voice actor uh, Lars Mikkelsen. Mm -hmm. But even this <laughs> fails to impress in the slightest <sighs> because okay. As much as I applaud them for getting uh, Nash Mikkelsen, the, the voice actor, etc., um, the problem is uh, he's a 60-year-old pudgy Danishman who has eaten one too many Danishes in his life <laughs> and really cannot pull off the prime of his life super brilliant admiral. Yep. he's he. The one thing, I think the one only thing, the one tiny itty thing about this piece of crap episode was his voice. And I'm like, wow, that's the Thrawn voice from the, the Timothy Zahn book series, Heir to the Empire. That's so good. And then you listen to what he's saying, and you're like, wow, it's almost as if this is being written by some hack, though, instead of Timothy Zahn. <laughs> you start to realize it is. Yep. Um, Thrawn has, um, you know, he's, he's dragged together his, his survivors. Uh, they're, they're a Roman legion now. Don't ask me why. Um, it's probably for the same reason that the bandits in the hinterlands are, are samurai from Japan. It's... Yeah, that was weird. It's, it just is. See, apparently, yes. you go to a different galaxy, right? And instead of being like, wow, this is very weird, like the Yu Song Vong and the Legends Lore, regardless of what you think of them, uh, it's the neighboring galaxy. Uh, they're just Japanese people. Uh, and they're turtles, and they're dog people. Or dogs. Dog horses? I don't know. Dorses? See, the, the best actor in today's episode is absolutely the bat-dog thing creature. Um, because it, it knows what's up. It, it understands. When um, a purple-haired woman, whose name escapes me now, as she has uh, left, uh, frankly, not that uh, much impression on me. Sabine. Sabine, that might be it, right. Uh, Sabine gets ambushed by a bunch of samurais from feudal Japan. Um, and the dog immediately makes a hasty retreat. Like, it's it's over the hills and far, far away by the time anything, anything hits the dirt here. Sabine, of course, by sheer virtue of being a future warrior with a glowing sword, easily defeats the feudal Japanese warriors. And the dog then just comes wandering back like hello oh you lived good i have a backpack here that i kind of open <laughs> yes and that's the worst part the dog comes back and it's they have this like little gag thing that goes on right where it's like hello but i'm sad and she's like, don't follow me you left me and then like the dog slowly follows and this goes on for like five or ten minutes 
It whimpers a little bit, like, I didn't mean to leave you to die, strange woman. But I'm super attached, and this is a whimsical moment, and a whimsical number starts to play, and we literally both count down when the dog disappears off screen because she tells it to go away when it reappears on screen to follow her. It's textbook. As the music starts being all playful, it's like the dog, oh, look, it's misbehaving. Oh, my God. I hate this. I hate this episode. Like... What is the only reason why the dog returned was because, as you pointed out, it can't open its own backpack. It cannot acquire the food that is stashed away. Like, I'm... Please feed me. I would have left you to die, actually, Sabine. I don't really like you, but actually I'm hungry. Please open my food back. <laughs> I was hoping to feast upon your corpse, but you defeated the samurai. And honestly, samurai are quite, you know, gamey. I don't want them. <laughs> They do come across with some turtle people, and the dog is like, ah, delicious snacks. But once again, Sabine is like, no, you will starve now, animal. And it does starve. Like, the turtle people feed it like a rock or something at the end of the episode. But beyond that, this poor thing is not allowed to eat anything. It's a large animal, and I like to point out that the amount of, you know, food it needs to intake to maintain its body mass is probably more than that little pebble they gave it. One would think so, yes. Uh, did anything else of note happen beyond the dog? Uh, oh, right. I get oh it. She found Ezra, who's just like... He's... Oh. He, he, okay. So... <laughs> prime the scene. Prime the scene. <laughs> clearly, the, the turtle people. The turtle people are, are indigenous to this galaxy. Oh, by the way, we've missed another slight point as well. Um, the witches of Dathomir, um, they're not from Dathomir. The, the witches of Dathomir are from a planet called Peridia. Or so they claim. The capital of their kingdom. Uh, they're... <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, they, they, are, they, however, call themselves Dathomirians. So I, I don't quite know how to square this particular circle. <laughs> this, this big glaring plow is like the witches of Dathomir are not from Dathomir. They refer to themselves as Dathomirians. They're actually from Peridia, from another galaxy. So apparently, before the hyperspace, you know, disconnect between the galaxies, and so they're from there and apparently that they, they call themselves dathomirians and also they had a kingdom and an empire and also they're but the kingdom and empire is also sort of fallen but there's a lot more witches of dathomir than you'd expect so there's going to be a lot more of them in disney's lore now because we had to make them a thing well <laughs> there, there's there's three of them on the planet and they've got an entire fortress and it's 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 spotlessly clean so i presume there's more of them mm -hmm. it appears that See, there's this a lot is of kind them. of the problem right here <laughs> If the witches of Dathomir, who aren't from Dathomir, if the witches of Dathomir from Peridia still have a full-on power structure in this galaxy to the point where they have enormous statues and fortresses and stuff, and apparently have enough supplies to equip an entire Imperial Star Destroyer, which, you know, just hovers in the air, which is what Star yes, Destroyers do these it, days. Anyway. It's, not a, it's, it's totally not the atmospheric-rated Star Destroyer, the only one that was. No, it's a, just a regular Star Destroyer. Hovering in the atmosphere, like, oh, I can do this. I don't have any atmospheric thrusters, but I'm this. here. Hello. <laughs> uh, they've got enough supplies to, to to supply it, so I I don't know what kind of a power structure they have here in the other galaxy, but it seems to be doing a lot better than the witches of Dathomir from Peridia in the other galaxy, who, you know, got killed and that stuff. They got genocided completely, except then they didn't, because Disney said, oh, well, actually, some of them survived. Also, they have a kingdom well, in another galaxy. And there's actually a lot of them. They're actually nowhere near being extinct, actually. <laughs> Thus, I suppose we return to Titus of Daenerys, uh, who wishes to break the wheel. Oh. Because he realizes that the galaxy is just like, it's an endless circle of violence. But you and I, Padawan, we shall stop the circle. How, master? Fascist dictatorships. Oh. We'll break the circle. If we let Thrawn back into our galaxy, he'll destroy the Republic. And the Empire will be back. But won't that be yeah, the... Then we'll have peace. Won't that be the circle repeating? No! It's breaking the cycle! <laughs> it's breaking the... We're breaking the wheel. But hold on. The Republic's already broken the wheel. Like, there is no Empire. Thrawn's gone. Like, you could just stab him in the heart and you'd be done with it. Like, no! It's... <laughs> done. And he's also like, I don't like the Jedi. Why? Jedi, because I like the idea of the Jedi, but I... He actually says this, by the way. I like the idea of the Jedi, but but not the truth of it. Well, what's the truth that you don't like? I'm not going to say because I actually don't know. <laughs> that they're weak. And the worst part is there there are scenes where you can see the pain in Titus Polo's eyes as he just stares off, off above the camera, and he's like... Oh. 
Why am I here? He's like, I can feel Why my Why will this be the out? last roll of my life? Like, you can feel his heart slowly stopping. Like, the, the cringe is so bad. He's like, Ugh. He's hanging in by a thread, dude. <laughs> like, it's... Everything just doesn't work. Like, again, and Lars Mikkelsen as well. It's just, oh god, he does not work here. He just does not they work. They should have seen He makes Thrawn. He, he makes him look like a pudgy old man because that's what Lars Mikkelsen is. He's a 60 year old pudgy Dane. Mm. <sighs> the voice is spot on, but honestly, they should have got a younger actor and then they should have had it lip synced. That would have worked, but they didn't. And of course, the, uh, the main failing of every single episode so far pretty much is that this doesn't need to be 40 goddamn minutes long you could have wrapped all of this up in 20 tops like if, if you remove all of the silent scenes where characters are staring at walls or landscapes or arguing with their goddamn dog or something this should be a 20 minutes episodes tops now throw in a little bit of action which is about 30 seconds probably in this entire thing uh, there's even a... Okay, let, let me see here. So how long is the scene where they discover the goddamn turtles? Okay, one, two, three, four, five. No. The scene with the turtles is five minutes long. And it's sort of revolving around the turtle being like, Oh, you found me. And Sabine being like, yeah, I found you. Do you speak English? And of course it does. It speaks English enough to say Ezra Bridger, at least. Mm. Let me show the symbol. And then convincing the dog not to eat it. And that doesn't include the other part of the turtle scene where they wander into the village and the camera's like panning around like, look at this village and all their villagey things they're villaging about. It's like, wow, very villagey, right? All right. I do find it remarkable. <laughs> so this this utterly defenseless species of creatures who apparently rely solely on their natural camouflage looking like rocks, uh, they've got a big old village of seemingly immobile pod things. If there's some kind of outcast society of redneck hillbillies banished here long long ago like they've got cook fires they've clearly got technology yet they wear ragged clothing which they clasp together with bits of bones if this planet is populated by more creatures like bat dog beast i i feel like these people should be at the bottom of the uh, pecking order frankly i feel like they should occupy the position of sandwich yeah they don't have it they seemingly are undefend they have no defenses no weapons which to tame the land with and are completely relying on the good graces of uh, random strangers. I presume so. Like, maybe Ezra just found them one day and it's like, okay, I'll protect you from the animal things. And they're like, oh, cool. We'll start setting up, like, TV antennas or something. Like, oh, my God, let's... Like, okay, I guess so... we can develop a civilization. So they started working on it. <laughs> you figured out how a radio works, but you, you, live, you live in trailers. I have no idea. This whole other galaxy thing is not doing the store any good services. This is also a problem with Star Wars Rebels. And there's all sorts of problems here with the writing. And I have no idea where this is supposed to go. There's apparently a rumor that this is supposed to tie into Heir of the Empire, which Disney has decanonized because uh, that undermines the Rey storyline and it's part of the old Legends lore. So I have no idea how that could possibly be true. Um, I have no idea if... Uh, I don't know, honestly, Thrawn looks kind of like an idiot in this entire thing. He's, he's not written well. He makes a horrible mistake. He's like, all right, we'll send the two Jedi to get the other Jedi I don't like. And then we'll send two squads after those two Jedi who are going to kill the Jedi I don't like to kill those two Jedi. It's like, your plan is about as awful as Jango Fett's plan to assassinate Padme, who hires an assassin to, to use a robot to assassinate Padme. <laughs> Oh my god, help me. <laughs> I I hope he's got a plan for when he gets home or something, you know, that he'll he'll do something amazing because he has very little presence. There's another scene too where they're first introduced and all of the stormtroopers who are now Roman legionnaires, all of them are universally dirty, uh, stand around and they're chanting Thrawn. Thrawn yeah, like Thrawn. tribals. And... <laughs> It sounds like this should be a scene where all of these guys are standing there, like they're they're stamping their feet or something like thrown, thrown, thrown. Like the entire scene should feel electric. It should it should shake the screen. You should go like, wow, Admiral Thrawn, look at all these loyal soldiers. Like it should feel, in fact, a bit tribal. Instead, I guess the guy who did the sound balancing just fucked <laughs> up or something. 
because what should be a loud, bombastic, triumphant Thrawn, Thrawn, Thrawn is like, Thrawn, Thrawn, Thrawn. I guess we care Thrawn, about Thrawn, like, Thrawn. like he's our commander, I guess. <laughs> He'll beat us most viciously if we don't whisper his name. We got so bored being stuck here, we started to LARP as Roman too. <laughs> they did! One of the little bastards have put on like a Roman death helmet. Yes, the faceplate. He sends Sabine off. He gets Sabine <laughs> a bat dog. Uh, and he hands her a weapon and goes like, well, die well. <laughs> die well and salutes her basically, like with honor and stuff. And it's like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> Bruh, you're a stormtrooper. You're not actually like a Roman dude. He's like, listen, we've been stuck out here for like five or ten years or whatever, but like, honestly, I'm really into this Roman roleplay we're doing right now. Like, you don't, you don't understand how boring it gets over here. There's nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, we've been here for a very long time. I mean, we've we've loved this pretty much. You know, we've we did the Qing Dynasty last year. Now we're doing the we're doing the Romans. <laughs> You should have seen our barbarian stage. That was quite something to look at. <laughs> the guys, they got painted in mode. <laughs> I don't think they quite know where they're going with any of this. Especially as I think there's like one episode left. <laughs> so the only thing that can happen is Ahsoka arrives. Uh... Sabine and Ezra Bridger beats the shit out of the two assault squads. We're totally going to be enough to deal with, you know, two Jedi or something. That's going to be fine. I love the And then Thrawn is going to is going to return to the to the um, actual proper world and he's going to be like, "And now my TV series commences." God, I hope it has better uh, writing than the other one. <laughs> the only problem of course being that in, you know, the whole Ray movies, the the you know, Republic was still standing until it got, like, blasted by the Death Star, so, um... Yeah. I don't know what he's hoping to achieve here. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say that the Republic's... Even though the New Republic has really stupidly de demilitarized... Oh my god, this show is also so stupid. The New Republic, immediately after taking control, immediately demilitarizes and brings back the, the Valoran, like, doctrine. The idea of, like... Uh, no, the planets will have their own PDFs, and there'll be like a small, very, very tiny Republic fleet to en enforce disputes. It's like that is literally what led to the rise and the crisis of the, you know, the Separatist movement. Like, what the, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? That happened like only Minor. a few decades ago, and you're repeating the same mistake instantly. <laughs> Insignificant details in the grand scheme of things, Carl. Minor insignificant details. Oh. Maybe, maybe, okay, maybe, listen, listen, listen. The thing is, uh, all of the Rey movies, uh, that's just one big Kekakudori from Admiral Throne. Like, all of that was just as planned. Like, he planted the seed of uh, Rey uh, inside of uh, Palpatine's granddaughter or whatever, personally. And all of this is one grand deception for him to return to the galaxy after everything's on fire and be like, so, um, I'm the boss now. And everyone will be so exhausted by the idiotic shit that has happened over the course of the last decade that they'll just be like, yeah, nope, hail the Emperor. Yep. Hail the Emperor. We're going back to Empire. Like this. It didn't work out. The New Republic was certainly a disaster. There... We tried the Republic. It was shit. <laughs> it was shit. There was a reason why we stopped doing that. There was a reason <laughs> We had to be reminded by it. <laughs> oh, this story is just so bad. It is the only possible hope at this point in time, as even the villains have been stripped of any interest that they once possessed.